In this video, we are going to talk about sex and the fearful avoidant attachment style. I am Pauline and I am so happy you are here because sex in intimate relationships, it's quite a big deal, isn't it? The having it, the not having it. <laughs> and as a fearful avoidant, all of it can become even more confusing. So this was a much requested topic and there is so much to say about this topic. So we won't be able to address all of it in this video, but I wanted to talk about one of the main things, namely that um, sex can pretty much roughly go two ways in a fearful avoidant that is in a relationship. Either you're hypersexual or you're completely shut off. And these two can like bounce back and forth too. So how does that work? In what kind of patterns do you see this? Usually fearful avoidance when they have to work for love, for approval, for um, attention, they tend to go the hypersexual way. So that means that when you are not getting love, you are not getting attention, you are not getting approval, you are using everything in your arsenal to get that other person to come closer, to create that connection, to be with you. And then sex can be a very, very mighty weapon. So this is usually what happens when a fearful avoidant is dating somebody who is not emotionally available. They work, they work for love, they work for attention, they work for everything. And when they are not getting that, that is when they can use sex in a way to create that connection. And that in a way works perfectly for the fearful avoidant who is actually quite scared of connection too, because then you might have sex and you feel that connection during sex, but then afterwards the emotional unavailable partner will probably retreat. And even though that hurts you, it also feels safe in a way because then you get to control the connection. You decide when connection is going to be there when you initiate sex. And maybe this works more for women in that way than for men, I'm not sure. But that is a way for, let's just say women, to create that connection in an emotionally unavailable relationship. So then you could get that attention and get that love through sex. And also when you're not in a relationship, fearful avoidance um, can be hypersexual in where they just have sex with a lot of people. And that can also be finding that love, finding that attention, finding that approval, but not having to deal with the connection of a, a committed, deeper relationship. So the benefit of just having sex, having one night stands is that you have sex, you have this beautiful, intimate moment, sometimes, obviously, sometimes not, but it, it can be this beautiful, intimate, connected moment. And then when that, when that is over, when the sex is over, then you get to retreat again. And then you get to, you know, go, go your ways. And, and in a way, this serves a purpose in, in the wounds of the fearful avoidant where you desperately want connection and you want these intense feelings and you want um, uh, passion, but you're also scared of true connection. So you see how that kind of works in um, either one night stands or in a relationship with an emotionally unavailable partner. Sex then serves the purpose of having that intense emotional connection for a moment and then retreating. So that is one way, the hypersexual way. And the other one is completely shutting off. And it can be that in one situation you're um, very sexually focused and you feel a lot of desire and in another situation you're just completely shut off. And it can happen that you think that it's the partner, that it's this specific partner that you're just not attracted to. But what can also happen is that in a committed, loving, healthy relationship, usually a fearful avoidant that hasn't healed yet will shut off. 
will have a lot of, of difficulty with intimacy and sex. And I'm saying usually and generally because everybody is different. And I think sex is such a, um, a different topic. Of course, your attachment style influences uh, sex and everything surrounding it and intimacy. But also there can be so many specific associations with sex, whether you've been abused, whether you've had really horrible experiences, um, so many things can influence your your religion your culture so many f things can influence specifically sex and intimacy that it's very hard to say this is how a fearful avoidant always will react to sex there is a lot of other factors involved so having said that usually <laughs> um or a lot of fearful avoidance in a loving committed relationship that haven't healed at at all yet they they run on to realizing, wait, I'm I'm not desiring my partner. I'm not attracted to my partner. I don't want to have sex with my partner. And so <clears throat> you feel completely shut off. And in a way you are shut off. Um, and you think it's your partner. They are not doing it right. They are not, you know, being attractive or it's a sexual compatibility that's wrong. But what happens is that as a fearful avoidant, like I said, you're very afraid of connection, of true, deep connection and intimacy. And in a loving, committed relationship, in a healthy relationship, the potential and possibility for true connection is always there. Which is super scary for a fearful avoidant who's scared of that connection. So just imagine it. It is always there. It's always possible. But you're scared of it. So you're not... You're not really... Going for it. Going towards it. And there is a, a level of connection in your relationship that is somewhat comfortable. And fearful avoidance manage that by... Uh, creating highs and lows, the pushing and the pulling. So it's not that it's stable or constant. It can be, but um, usually as a fearful avoidant, you're already kind of managing the connection part in a relationship. And then sex is like connection 2.0, right? It's like 2.0. It's like intense connection. So when you're already struggling and trying to manage the connection in the relationship by pushing and pulling and creating ups and downs, you're not going to go to 2.0 and, and really go for um, that more intense form of connection. That is way too scary. And so you just completely shut off and keep the connection in a way kind of superficial. Does this make sense so far? <clears throat> so... <clears throat> fearful avoidance want connection they want passion they want desire but actually getting it actually having it actually feeling it that is scary because there's a lot of negative associations to it and what i've found in a lot of fearful avoidance is that like i said sex is almost like a very different world where a lot of different uh, beliefs come into play and so when you're in a healthy relationship with just a good good person a good partner they have their own beliefs around sex and there is so much shame around sex so much taboo so many beliefs about what is okay what isn't okay um and also a lot of insecurity about people's their own capabilities so it's very possible that a healthy securely attached partner who is just very secure in um connecting you with you and having just a, a relationship with you is actually quite insecure when it comes to sex because maybe they've had experiences that weren't you know top notch or maybe they were brought up in a way where sex was seemed a, a sin or deemed a sin and um or it was just something that was not talked about or was a taboo. So those can be very loving families that create secure attachments, but that create also shame around sex. And then 
why it doesn't feel safe to have sex with a partner that is secure but has their own beliefs or insecurities around sex is because fearful avoidance are very afraid of rejection. So your partner might be secure in themselves in connecting with you and having a healthy relationship and you're not afraid of being rejected anymore in that relationship but they might reject you or you might feel rejected in the area of sex where they might feel like you are too much and you are not too much it is just their trigger that and their fear that they can't handle you for instance so the specific beliefs around sex come into play and a fearful avoidant can pick up on that so easily so when your partner is not completely secure in sex and intimacy um you will feel that and so you will not go there you will shut that part off because you are afraid of rejection you are afraid that they will figure something out um about you that you are too much that you are whatever it is which is not true again um but you are you might just feel so safe in the relationship that is here now in the healthy committed relationship that is here now that you don't want to risk it by um being sexual um and and maybe them rejecting you so like I said, there's so much to say about sex, but this is like roughly the two ways that um, fearful avoidance go about it. And and you could have had a relationship where sex just was easy and it was amazing, but the rest of the relationship was kind of toxic or emotionally unavailable. Now you know why. And you could be in a healthy relationship now and think, why am I not desiring my partner? Why am I not attracted to them? Shutting off is just a coping mechanism to deal with it. Is... Is this valuable? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to talk about this topic because it's just a very important topic that we all deal with in a relationship, obviously. So let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions. I will make more videos. I'm so happy you are here and I will see you in the next one.